This conference will... Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie, the micro manna with Reverend Essie and friends. God is good. Amen. We're coming at you today on Wednesday, the 20th of April, 2011, almost Resurrection Sunday. Praise the Lord. We're in a Passover season. God is good, and we're asking the Lord through the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb, we're asking him to cause the enemy to pass on by. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being a wonderful Father that you are. We thank you for bringing us around to yet another Passover season, another Resurrection Sunday. Jesus, we thank you for the things that you did just for us. You did it out of pure love. And for that, we thank you. We ask right now that you send the Holy Spirit into this Bible study to teach us those things that you would have us to know. Lord, we're just hungry for your word. This world is getting so crazy and outrageous, Lord, that we just need more of you. The more off balance the world becomes, the more your children run to you. We know how to run from trouble. We know how to run to you. So we run to your open arms, Lord God, and we thank you. We just thank you for being there for us. Everybody that's on this Bible study, everybody that's on now, those that may come later, and, and, Lord, even those that listen later, the ones that can't make it, Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one. Bless their households. Cover them. I cover them with your blood, Yeshua. I cover them with your blood, Jesus. I cover the households and the doorposts with your blood, their hearts, their minds, Lord God, I cover with your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I cover my family. I cover the family of all those that are interested in the Bible study and comes here and listens. Lord, I cover the family with your blood. And, and God, I, I ask that you continuously write it upon the tablets of our hearts how we already, through the blood of Jesus, have victory through yeah. him. Regardless of what the enemy tries to make it look like, we already, it's not that we're going to get the victory. We have the victory. Jesus, yeah. no matter what it looks like, we won. And we yeah. thank you for that. We just ask, Lord God, that whenever we get down and we get a little tired, Lord God, that you continue to refuel us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we love we love studying your word. I love these Bible studies. There's times I don't feel good, and I still get on. And by the time we get done, Lord, I'm feeling better. And only you can do that. Only the Most High God, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the one and only true God. Amen. We thank you for amen. that, Lord, just for being who you are. In Jesus' yeah. holy name, amen. 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 Had to thank you. God is good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Out. Yeah, got to get it out. God is good. You know, there's times where we just feel bad. I know you probably do the same thing. You ever get so down sometimes you almost can't see up? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord just lays it on your heart and he says, I'm here. And then mm -hmm. you just seem stronger. You're like, yeah, I'm a king's kid. I yeah. don't want to feel like that. God wouldn't have me feeling mm -hmm. like that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You you know I know. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, you know I've been praying for you. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yes, God is going to do a mighty thing. God's going to do something that's going to make you laugh. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, if, I you, if, you, if you wanted to. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm some some sometimes people can be so lowly, and mm. it can not be so low that uh, you you can actually you know the, God says. Not to make fun of people when they fall, you know, but mm -hmm. sometimes our enemies just they they're, they're so relentless that sometimes when, when when after God, you know, defeats them, then you just sit there and you're like, "That's my dad, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. my father. He did it again." Mm -hmm. And if I'd have did it, I'd have fouled it all up. Exactly, and mm -hmm. you'd have been asking for forgiveness and everything. You know how we are <laughs> if we do things our <laughs> way. <laughs> You know, you think you're going to do it right, and then it just doesn't turn out right, and you're like, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Yes. It yeah. seemed like a good thing at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, that flesh just wants to jump out and slap somebody sometimes. Oh, yes, man. <laughs> and lay, lay hands on them, huh? <laughs> that, suddenly. <laughs> Amen. So, I guess our poetress is not here yet. I don't know if she's coming tonight or not. Her mom, Judy's mom, was having some problems, and there's a few people uh, that haven't come yet. So, I don't know if they're coming or not, but... Uh, what's going on here? Okay. There we go. Okay, I'll go ahead and just, I just want to do a song. Let me see which one. Um, he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 And then because of the season that's coming up on us in a few more days, I have another one. Arise and sing, all ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered thee. Yeah. Arise and sing, all ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered thee. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him, for the Lord is your God. Amen. I just had to get that one in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Arise and sing if you're a child of the Most High. Amen. Yes. Anybody else? Amen. Nobody else has anything to uh, miss Lex? Nothing? Nobody else? Okay. <laughs> well. All right, so tonight, if everybody wants to get, if you can get your studies together, get your Bible together, we're going to be doing uh, John, New Testament, John chapter 4, and we're going to start with verse 1 and see how far the Spirit takes us on this. Okay, so when everybody, I hope you have John. It's on page eleven twenty two in my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. If you want to go to eleven twenty two. All right. Okay. John chapter four. And we'll start with verse one and see where it takes us. All right. Good evening, Nicole. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? Feeling the same. I know you. when you were talking about healing, I liked that post. That was good. Oh, divine healing, yes. Claim it some more. Amen. What we're doing tonight is we're doing um, uh, John chapter 4, and we're just going to start with verse 1 and take it to... Whatever the Spirit of God, uh, you know, goes far as uh, however far the Spirit of God takes us. Um, uh, are you reading tonight? Actually, no. Okay. Who's who all reading tonight? I'll be one. Two. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. I just I just want to do like a small uh, little beginning to this. And then we'll read it from the Word. Um, 
this is just a little something I found up on. I found on. This is not my own words. So I'm not one of them ones to try to claim somebody else's. But I just want to kind of go, you know, read what this says here about the woman at the well. It's a mm-hmm. short summary. Okay. Um, traveling from Jerusalem in the south to Galilee in the north, Jesus and his disciples took a quick took the quickest route through Samaria. He was tired and he was thirsty. And he sat by Jacob's well. I think if you, if you uh, anybody study up on the Bible or maybe watch some movies that come on TV, you maybe know about Jacob's well. And while his disciples went to the village of Sychar, about a half mile away, to buy food, it was about noon, the hottest part of the day, and a Samaritan woman came to the well at this inconvenient time to draw water. Mm-hmm. And something happened. Uh, I'll just say it this way. In his encounter with the woman at the well, Jesus broke some Jewish customs, okay? Mm. And we know that our brother, or the biggest brother in the family of God, our Savior, he was good for breaking some customs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so we'll discuss that later. All right, Um, I started before, so Brother Aaron, I'll let you start it out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when, therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had, that Jesus made, wait a minute, let me start over. <laughs> when, therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Three, you want me to do three? Uh, and, uh, however, is, yeah, as many as you want. Well, we usually go three, but uh, if you want to do more. Okay. Yeah. I, can, I can go to nine. Okay, right. okay. Um, four. And he must needs go through Samaria. <clears throat> then comes he to a city of the city... Wait, what is wrong with me today? Then comes he <laughs> to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There came, or there cometh the woman of Samaria, to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? <clears throat> For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Wow. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I finally gave birth to those uh, verses. Sorry for stam- stammering on my words. But um, I uh, get from this. Uh, well, can we just? Can I just go back a bit? And oh, take I, your time. I, go ahead. I, I really like the way you set this up and how Jesus is going to break some customs. But one of the other things that I've noticed about uh, the Book of John, John is kind of a. Uh, it, it, I guess if John was alive today, he would be an author. He, he, would, he would get paid for the stuff that he writes because a lot of his stuff is parallel. You know, a lot of his stuff has themes throughout. But anyway, what I'm getting at is if you look at verse 1, uh, you start get, being introduced to John the Baptist and how he baptized with water. And then in verse 2, uh, Jesus' the first miracle was changing water to wine. And in verse 3, he told Nicodemus, you know, you have to be born by water and of the Spirit. And now in chapter 4, he's at a well, water well, with a woman. You know, so there's a common theme of water going on here. You know, we are, I'm sure we're going to introduce all of that in coming verses. But it's kind of like Jesus is introducing water and showing you how, how what he is through the illustrations of the water. But anyway, the story goes that, you know, the, he perceived that the Pharisees were um, 
finding out that he's preaching more and and baptizing more than John did, and you know he i'm I'm sure his time of capture and crucifixion has not has not come, so to avoid a confrontation with them, he just kind of left the area and went to Galilee, and so he went uh he came to this city, which was uh Jacob's at one time, and his he built the, Jacob built the well there that his uh, he fed his people and his animals with. And at this moment, this woman of Samaria comes up. <clears throat> now, traditionally, the, um, you know, so like the Bible says, the, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't, didn't get along because uh, of, you know, just purely racism. Uh, just like uh, Peter and Paul got upset with each other because uh, Peter didn't, Peter wanted to minister to just the Jews, and Paul was like, okay, you do that, I'm going to the Gentiles. So she already had a preconceived notion of what Jesus is all about. She said, you're a Jewish person, so you uh, don't have, I know you don't want nothing to do with me. <clears throat> you recognize that I'm a Samaritan woman? And so, um, uh, oh, oh, oh uh, here's a significance in, uh, in, in, in verse 6, too. Now, Jacob's uh, well was there, and it was about the sixth hour. I guess that translates to about noon. And uh-huh. um, <clears throat> and, and it's kind of cool because I don't know why it mentions the time. Maybe, it, it, you know, John really wanted you to know the time of day. But that was the same time that Jesus was crucified, around noon. So he is introducing himself to this woman who's not a Jewish person, you know, and it's, he's kind of symbolically saying, I'm coming to save you too. And then at the same time on another day, he actually does it on the cross. I thought that was pretty cool. That I got mm-hmm. that out, out, out of my uh out of my uh, concordance. Mm-hmm. I don't want to I don't want to act like I thought that up too right now. <laughs> I got it out of the <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that was pretty cool when I read that. So anyway, the story goes to, to chapter or to verse nine as uh like this. Jesus asks her, Hey, wanna can you give me something to drink? And she gets what we call up in the north midwest, Sididi. I don't know if y'all say that there where y'all are, mm-hmm. but stuck, you know, kinda stuck up with them. Like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, no, holla, 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 holla. I know you ain't I know you ain't asking me as the Mariner girl, because I know I we ain't got nothing to do with y'all and you ain't got nothing to do with us. So let's just keep this thing separate. And so uh that's where it ends in, in verse nine. Okay. Verse 9. Okay. One thing I liked, I had to read it a couple times whenever I read verse 1 and 2, <laughs> where it says, like, we know that Jesus gave John some props about mm-hmm. how, you know, him baptizing people and everything. But then it says here in John 4, that Jesus baptized more than John. Mm-hmm. It says he baptized more disciples than John did. Mm-hmm. I thought that was awesome how Jesus gives hands-on training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's the only one. He's the only one that can give hands-on training. We don't learn from uh, ourselves, out of our flesh. We learn from him. That was mm-hmm. great to see. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay, I'll read 10 on. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Mm -hmm. The said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And the woman said 
unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, what she, what's going on here is <laughs> she... Let me see, Jesus, Jesus answered her, and he said, if you knew. This is the ignorance that, of God that this woman had. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as a Samaritan, she had no spiritual discernment whatsoever. She wouldn't know who he was. Now, when we read in the Bible, many times, you, well, there's a few times in the Bible where it says that Jesus perceived, you know, where mm-hmm. someone can perceive. That's perception. That's, that's uh, discernment. He perceived mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. How can you be with? the Son of God, how can you be with the Savior and not know who he is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was blinded. We don't know who he is until he puts that call on us. He calls our name. And, and so he opens up our eyes to show us who he is. When Jesus opens up your eyes and shows you who he is, it is just mm-hmm. so awesome. Mm-hmm. Totally awesome. Amen. So I, I like that. Uh, he said, if you knew, I notice in verse 10, he said, if you knew the gift of God, he calls it a gift. He mm-hmm. said, if you knew the gift of God and who you're talking to, he said, okay, and then and he said, uh, he would have, you would have asked me to give you water. So in other words, he's telling her he has living water. He has the kind of water where you'll never thirst again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talking about a thirsty soul here, talking about her soul. He, she's concerned about the physical, and he's letting her know that his interest is in the spiritual. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My, my. Okay, now mm-hmm. let's close your eyes and think. We close our eyes and think. There's a man and a woman at a well. Mm-hmm. And the woman's known to, uh, let's just get deep into it. The woman's known for being fast. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you know whenever you... um. When you have relationship with someone, okay, you are considered as marrying that person. Mm-hmm. This woman had a few relationships. This was a, first of all, this was a considered a uh, dirty woman to mm-hmm. the way Jesus was raised. According to their customs, first of all, he wasn't supposed to be speaking to the woman. Mm-hmm. And second, she was a Samaritan, a, a group of uh, a group of Jews traditionally, a group that the Jews traditionally despised. They did not like them. Like you said, racism. Mm-hmm. And third, he asked her to get him a drink of water, which would have made him ceremonial, ceremony, ceremonially unclean from mm-hmm. using her cup or jar. If G- Jesus drinking. From that woman's hand, okay, it's like, like you ever hear people say, when I come to your house, I want to eat from your hand or I want to drink from your hand, when mm-hmm. somebody hands you something. Well, Jesus just drinking the water from this woman's hand. It starts out that he was thirsty. It starts mm-hmm. out telling us that he was thirsty. Okay, mm-hmm. and him just drinking from this Samaritan woman's hand, that was a, that was a, a, a he was, he's considered ceremonially unclean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, can you imagine how shocked she was for him to want to drink from her hand? He was showing, like you said, you know, he was showing um, uh, uh, love, actually. He was showing mm-hmm. caring, love and caring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and not only that, he was going against everything that he was raised up to think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it says, the woman said unto him, uh, in verse 11, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. In other words, she's saying, how are you supposed to give? She said, the well is deep. This mm-hmm. well is very deep. Our, you know, mm-hmm. Jacob, our, our our father Jacob made this well. This well is very deep, and there's no way you're going to be able to get some water without having something in your hand to be able to get the water. This woman mm-hmm. wants to know. She's still speaking in the flesh. She wants to know, what are you talking about? How are you going to get water and you don't have anything to get the water from, with? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um. And verse 12, art thou greater? She, in other words, she said, are you trying to tell me that you're greater than Jacob? You know, every time we talk about God, you hear people say, every time we talk about, uh, we hear the God of um, Abraham and Jacob. You know, you hear that. 
mm-hmm. Isaac, you know, and then and, and, uh, he, Jacob was a great person. She's saying, are you trying to tell me you're better than Jacob? Mm-hmm. Who gave us the well and, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle, which goes to show, and ver- verse 12 is letting us know that Jesus' divinity is being challenged. Mm-hmm. It also mm-hmm. lets us know that they really, really worship their forefathers in these days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus answered her and he said, whoever drinks of this water, now he's telling her, which actually if you think about what he said in verse 13, he's, it's kind of, he's, uh, he's kind of cracking on her a little bit. I mean, back in these days, <laughs> I, I'm sure, yeah, they didn't take that too kindly. He's telling them, you can go ahead and drink from Jacob's well all you want to, but you'll be thirsty all your life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Jesus exactly. is like, he's, yeah, he's letting her know i got something better than Jacob. I mean mm-hmm. Jacob. Right. And he said, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give will never be thirsty again, but the water shall spring up out of him like an everlasting well, like and give him everlasting life. Mm-hmm. Imagine how she felt whenever he told her that. In other words, he's saying the water that I give will give you satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is some of Christ's gifts. And speaking of gift, now we're talking about gifts in verse 14. That's a gift G- Jesus is offering her. You know, like a UPS truck drives up on, in front of your house and just drops off a package. You know, mm-hmm. and he can't wait to open up the package to see what it is. Well, he's giving her a package. He's giving her a gift. And then look in verse 10. And he's even telling her, if you knew the gift of God, mm-hmm. see, he's letting mm-hmm. her know, I have something for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, the another interesting thing was, you know, the parallel between the natural and the, and the, and the, and the spiritual, like you like you were saying. Um, you know, it's obvious to us that Jesus is talking spiritual water, you know, uh, everlasting life. And she's talking about this natural thing because we're at the – and you can't really blame her because the subject was this, this Jacob's well. You know, they're sitting at a well, and Jesus asked her to give him something to drink, and that's the subject. So, you know, you can't blame her for, for not departing from that. But then Jesus, you know, you know how you could talk to someone – Here's a small story. I had an art teacher who I told I was interested in painting, and I asked him for a uh, I asked him for a, uh, a, a a paintbrush. He said I cannot give out free uh, supply, school supplies, and I said, Oh, okay. I said, All right. Well, uh, I'll see if I can find some other way. Then he said, Well, but if I lose one and you find it, then it's okay with me if you keep it. And then he took one and threw it on the ground. So he didn't actually say, here's a, here's a brush, but he did. And this is what Jesus is saying to his lady. Okay, I'm, I know you don't recognize it. I'm talking about spiritual water. So let me, let, me, let me lower myself and say something that you can identify with. And that's when he said, whoever. And see, reading the Bible, when we read it, there's no pauses the way Jesus said it. There's no intonation, no fluctuation in the voice the way Jesus said it. You know, if I told you, whosoever shall drink of this water again shall thirst again. But if you say it like this, who else, whosoever shall drink of this water, and he pointing down the well, shall thirst again. That gives a different definition. That's what you said, uh, Reverend Nessie. But it just kind of brings some illumination when you bring the uh, the uh, the fluctuation in there. It, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I felt uh, like I was pulling teeth trying to get through that. I was hoping that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, and, and also the lady got ghetto with him, you know, because, I mean, for real. Um, I was reading also in my concordance that uh, Sumerian people were, um, they were they were looked at by Jewish people as like half breed people have this and half that. It's kind of like today what um, uh, Mexican people are. Mexican mm-hmm. people are uh, a mixture of Native Americans and Spanish. Mm-hmm. So that's why you know uh, Mexican people have strong Indian features, what we would call Indian. 
but they speak Spanish because of, you know people from Spain came over and settled in Mexico and started mating with everybody. And the reason they're called Mexicans is that's a Spanish word for Mexicans, two races mixed mm. together. And that's why, you know, the Samaritan people were the same way. And they were disrespected by Jewish people and vice versa, so they just didn't like each other. So she got Well, no, in that, their law, they weren't allowed to mix with other people too, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. So she got ghetto with Jesus. Of course, she didn't know who Jesus was, so she got ghetto with him. You know, I'm, <laughs> you don't expect me to get your water, do you? And then he dropped a bomb on her and said, if you knew who was asking you, you would ask me for uh, some water, and I'll give you living water. So I'm, I'm, I suspect that there was a pause there and a squinting of the eyes by her. You know, like, hold on. No, wait a minute. Something's up with you. You ain't one of these normal argumentative Jews, mm-hmm. these, these dismissive <laughs> Jews. You're, you know, the first off, like you said, Reverend Nessie, you're engaging me in conversation. Now, something's wrong with that to begin with. And you ask me for water. Now, I can't prove this, Reverend Nessie, but I bet you I'm right. The mere fact that she is at the well means that she has a dipper for her. And then right. she tells Jesus, you don't have one. So how am I going to get you a drink when you don't have a dipper? Because I know you ain't going to drink from mine. I'm not allowed I just to, yeah. know that. So how are you going to want me to get you something and you ain't got a dipper? And so uh, mm. oh, anyway. So she okay, got so what you're, saying, what you're saying here is a ceremonial law uh, hinders people. Right. Exactly. And other people know it. If you are very ceremonial and religious and legalistic, mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. can take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. They sure can. They sure can. I mean, God had to show Peter that his little, his little way of doing things was wrong. When he told Peter to kill, slay, and eat, or slay, and eat, and Peter was like, uh-uh. I'm Jewish. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't uh, eat stuff that's unclean. But that's another story. Okay, you want me to start from sixteen? I, I'm sorry, my like going too much. No, no, that was fine. That was fine. I was. Ha- I was having a little hard time here. I was uh, kind of distracted somewhat. I was trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Okay. No, that was fine. Um. Okay. We stopped at sixteen. So, yeah, my 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 point in saying that she got a little ghetto with him means, okay, Jesus said, all right, well, let me get a little ghetto with you, <laughs> for lack of a term. So in 14, she said, uh, he tells her, whoever drink of this water shall drink again, shall thirst again. And in 15, she said, well, give me some of this water. I don't think, I don't think she said, well, I don't think she said, well, let me have some of this water so I don't have to come here and, and, and dip and drink. I believe she said, well, give it to me then. You got to give it to me. Because mm-hmm. remember, they still at odds. Mm-hmm. So that God, God, Jesus says, okay, well, let me get ghetto with you. All right, I'll give it to you. But in verse 16, he says, Jesus says unto her, go, mm-hmm. call thy husband, and come hither. In other words, go get your husband and come back. 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, you got that right. Uh-huh. Thou, hast, <laughs> thou hast well said, I have no husband. Thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said, in that said thou truly. So Jesus telling her, look. Uh, yeah, you didn't have 500. Now, that's something that is unmistakable. That's something that's unmistakable to her, that it's something about him. Mm-hmm. He spoke it in the little, you know, little this that she she brought up. Now, Exposure of sin. Yes. And she's feeling exposed, and she's feeling subdued. Now, everything changes. There's something about this guy. He he's Jewish. He's clearly Jewish. He's talking to me. He's about to break some Jewish traditions, and he knows something about me, and I don't remember ever meeting him. Mm-hmm. So um, in 19, <clears throat> he 
says, the woman says unto him, Sir, <laughs> notice the Uh-oh. attitude change. I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, if something, now something's up with you. Um, I ain't got my finger on it, though. But it's something up with you. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. Now, here she is taking a stab, just trying to find out who the heck he is. Um, our father worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, back in those days, correct me if I'm wrong, Reverend Essie, or anybody. The Jewish people, tradition said, you know, look, uh, um, the Messiah is going to come out of the Jewish uh, the Jewish line, and the Jewish people reside in Jerusalem. So if you guys want to worship the correct way, you've got to go to Jerusalem. And you have Samaritan people and people in the surrounding area who built temples, and they worship whatever they worship in their area. And the Jewish people say, y'all ain't doing this right. Now, true enough, the Messiah is going to come out of the Jewish people, but there was no law saying you got to come to Jerusalem just because the Jews are there. You know, but you see what I'm saying? So when she mm-hmm. said, um, so she said, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, which is probably okay if they were worshiping the correct God. But, but then she said, but you Jewish people say that in Jerusalem is the place mm-hmm. where men ought to worship. And Thank Jesus said to her, yeah, Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, our coming, when ye shall neither worship in this mountain, nor yet in, at Jerusalem, worship uh. the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. You're right, uh-huh. lady. Salvation is coming from the Jews. But if you were knew, knew the things that you were worshiping, it wouldn't matter where you worship. <laughs> so he got her straight on that. And I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna stop at uh, I'm gonna stop at twenty four. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Um. But the twenty three. But the hour coming, and now is because I'm standing in front of you, girl. When the true worshippers, true worshippers, the first worshippers that's worshiping the true God shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could you if you if they worship God in spirit and in truth in those mountains and in the places where they were, then that would have been fine. But they well, like you said, Reverend, you worship their ancestors. You know, they would say stuff like, you know, mm-hmm. they would worship Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Jesus got her straight on her priorities. Uh-uh. And her, you know, her, her, the priority is not the tradition. Because and here's something that just popped in my spirit. He broke some traditions to show her. Yes, he did. To, to straighten her out on her traditions. Isn't that the truck? Okay, I'm going to stop Protocol, there. protocol. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop there. Mm-hmm. He, you know, you're mentioning it, and it's true. Mm-hmm. If people would watch how Jesus did things, he mm-hmm. broke traditions. He let people yeah. know the real thing is here now. You don't have to worry about that tradition stuff anymore. Right, he, right. He broke traditions, and, and the people, remember when the disciples were in a, in a field eating corn and stuff and on the Sabbath? They got mad because mm-hmm. they, were, they were eating. You know, he, he did things, he did it on purpose to let people know that that law is abolished now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're right, and he said, and he said um, it says, uh, verse 25, it says, The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah co- is coming. In other words, she said, I know the Messiah is coming which we call mm-hmm. Christ, when he mm-hmm. is come, he will tell us all things. Now, what gets me about <laughs> verse 25 is the fact he's telling him that when the Messiah comes, he's going he's gonna to open her eyes and show him everything, and she doesn't even realize that he's talking to her. He, he's already come, and he's mm-hmm. opening up her eyes at that time. Yes. Which exactly goes to right. show 
Yeah, she she wasn't spirit filled. If she was spirit filled, she would have knew what he was doing. She would have mm-hmm. knew who he was. And then he right. doesn't say in verse twenty. He has to introduce himself in verse twenty six. He said, "I that speak unto you am he." Mm-hmm. He has to tell mm-hmm. this woman. If it goes to show he was unknown, he has to tell this woman. He has to teach this woman who he is. That he is the Messiah. Mm-hmm. This goes to show that it wasn't quite broken into people's minds yet that the Messiah had already come, that he was living among them. Yes, yes. In verse 27, and upon this came his disciples. Okay, after all that happened, the disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with this woman. Yet mm-hmm. no man said, what seekest thou, uh, or, or why talkest thou with her? See, they knew, they were astonished, it kind of threw them back a little bit when they saw it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. It threw them back a little bit whenever they saw it. But then they went, oh, uh, that's, that's just Jesus. He's doing his thing, right? You know, right. <laughs> you know what can you say? He's, he's the fa- He is the father's son, and he is about his father's business. Isn't that what he told his mother? Yes. Yeah, he's about he's his told. father's business. Right. So in other words, don't question. This is what mm-hmm. I'm getting out of this. Don't question mm-hmm. the Lord. Don't question what he is up to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just let him teach you. Let him open up your heart and mm-hmm. let him teach you. Amen. Um, that was, that's the word for me. <laughs> yeah, see, and me too. As I said it, I was feeling it. Yeah, because I, I, hey, you know, I'm one of them ones. I'm one of them kids. Why? 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 Yes. Yep. Yeah, don't question mm-hmm. him. Let him do what he has to do. Mm-hmm. And even sometimes when somebody says, well, what's going on in your, why are you allowing all that to happen to you? Why yes. is this happening? Why? Say, hey, I just give it to God. We'll find out the outcome whenever he says it's time. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Verse 28 says, the woman then left her water pot. <laughs> she left She left the water <laughs> pot and went her way into the city. Now, wait a minute. I thought she was supposed to be getting water. I thought she, everybody was thirsty and she was supposed to be getting some water for her five husbands. Right. Or whoever, yeah, whoever she was getting. So in other words, <laughs> yeah, Lord, she kicked them five husbands to the curb, water and all. <laughs> yes, she did. After she talked, hey, this is what happens to us. After we talk to Jesus and after we have a relationship with our Lord, we kick everybody to the curb. Hey, look, oh, yeah. get your own water, right? I got yep. mine. You get your own water, right? Yep, yep. That's Amen. what the disciples so, did. <laughs> yeah, yes, they did. They left everything and followed him. This is what God yep. wants us to do. He wants us to leave everything and follow him. Mm-hmm. And so she left her water pot and went her way into the city, and she said to everybody, she said to the men, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Mm. That's her test. She tested this woman from Samaria testified about Jesus Christ to mm-hmm. the men that she was sinning with. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I can only imagine how they felt about it. Along comes this man that's better than them. This woman mm-hmm. is totally turned on now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you see what I'm saying? But, but in a different way, okay? <laughs> They're shocked. Mm-hmm. Imagine this happening in your hometown, somebody that you know, okay, that had this type of life, all of a mm-hmm. sudden comes up and tries to preach Jesus to you. Oh, mm-hmm. my, my, Jesus, Jesus. Isn't what people do? People people judge everybody. And, you know, once, once, once you're a sinner, you know, to human beings, once you're a sinner, you're always a sinner. You'll never change. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, that Aaron, that Aaron, he kills me trying to act like he knows the Bible. He's always trying to teach somebody the Bible. I used to babysit Aaron. He ain't nothing, mm-hmm. never will be nothing. See, that's how they see people. Mm-hmm. Aaron mm-hmm. gets a touch from Jesus. Jesus touches your heart and changes your heart and opens up your eyes, and you're trying to tell people about Jesus, and they're like, yeah, right. right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And this woman said, yep. come see a man. And then what gets me is verse 30. They went out of the city and came unto him. Mm-hmm. These people, I'll end it with that. These people said, look. If he can change her, <laughs> okay, yeah. isn't yeah. this what they're supposed to say? If if mm-hmm. if, G, if if Jesus can change Essie, mm-hmm. I know he can change. I've got to see this man. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, and this is your testimony should be so real. Your testimony mm-hmm. should be so strong that people want some of whatever it was that you got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And, 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 and notice, she didn't draw them. I, I noticed something else about verse 30 short, but I get a lot out of it. Notice in verse 30, she didn't draw them unto her. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. See, they were attracted to Christ. They, it says, and they came unto him. So, mm-hmm. see, when people are out there talking about Jesus, they shouldn't be using his name. There's too many people out there drawing disciples unto themselves in yeah. the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead, we're supposed to be talking people to Jesus, not to us. Right, right. I'm done. <laughs> well, you know what else, Reminis, and I know you, you want, we're going to close, but... Mm-hmm. I wanted to just kind of, because now once we went through it, I can kind of see a trend of these water things in the first three chapters. Because when you introduce the water in verse one, uh, John was baptizing people in it. You know, introducing it's kind of like introducing Jesus to the unbelievers. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, or, the, uh, or 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 you know, that's how that's how you introduce Jesus when like water cleansing people for the first time, like in baptism. Introduction. Mm-hmm. Right, introduction. And then in, in chapter 2, he changes water into wine, which means that after him the Holy Spirit has come, because, you know, the Holy Spirit is always compared to wine. But his mama said, hey, Jesus, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? And she was like, hold on, mama, hold on now. My hour ain't come yet. So he mm-hmm. told, in chapter 1, he tells you how to deal with unbelievers. Mm-hmm. Chapter 2, he tells you how to deal with your family. In chapter 3, he tells you how to deal with the, the religious people, Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. And then in chapter 4, he tells you how to deal with people of other races who believe other stuff. Oh, my, my. I take it out into the I, world. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. 19. <laughs> yeah. Go ye into the world. Well, preach the gospel to every preacher. But you you know what I like about what you said? Mm-hmm. In uh, chapter 1, you said an introduction to Jesus. And as you were saying that, I read in verse, oh, wow. Oh, there it is, verse 38. Chapter 1, verse 38 says, Then Jesus turned and saw people following him. Okay, it Mm -hmm. says the people were actually following him. And Mm -hmm. And they said, Rabbi, which is to be, which is to say being interpreted master, they said, where do you live? They, you would see, we were talking about how they were being introduced to Jesus. They, Jesus even took them to his physical house. So, see, mm-hmm. people did go to Jesus' house. In verse mm-hmm. 39, he said unto them, come and see. And they came mm-hmm. and saw where he lived, and they abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So, they went, imagine going to Jesus' house. Wow. And chilling with him. Yep. That's, yeah. Awesome. That's that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a better word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Mm. Okay, did you want to go on and do some more? We got a couple oh. minutes. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to talk over talk if someone else wanted to say something, though. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Or does anybody want to add anything? Okay, well, uh, here's, uh, you stopped at 30. Um, um, yeah, 30, yeah. And and here's the deal. Now, remember in the beginning of the chapter, Jesus was tired and he was thirsty, you know, from, mm-hmm. from, from that journey? 31 says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him or asked him, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat. That ye know not of, and therefore, therefore said the disciples one to another, "Has any man brought him uh, ought to eat?" Uh-huh. And Jesus said unto them, "My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work." And he told them, "Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest." 
Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look in the field, for uh, for they are white already with harvest. Now, Jesus is, uh, this is deep right here. It says at the beginning of the chapter that Jesus was thirsty, and, you know, I, you don't usually get, you know, too thirsty without having some hunger, too. So, I mean, that's just my little input. But, um... <laughs> Now he now he don't want to eat. He don't want to eat or nothing. The disciples back with the food and everything, and he don't want to eat. Damn he, enough. Yeah. yeah. And he, <laughs> now he's saying his meat is to do the work of the person who sent him. And then he told them this thing that seemingly seems like it don't make no sense. And I'm going to go fast, go faster than this. He says, don't sit four months and then come to harvest. Usually what that means is, you know, when you planted something in the ground, you wait for the harvest to come, and then you, you go get your harvest. If you plant some, some corn, you wait for a month to spring up, you go harvest them. Jesus is like, no, souls out here are right for catching right now. That's what white means, you know, when the stuff gets white and it's ready for harvest. Look around you. There's some souls out here, even today. There's some souls out here that's ripe for the harvest. Don't think that you're coming out here to, sp- uh, to spread seed and then you don't bring a harvest in. Tell people about Jesus, but then pray with them and get them saved. Now, I know that sometimes you're going to spread seed, tell people about Jesus, and, you know, they don't accept it, but that's a seed. They refuse don't. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Jesus is saying, hey, look around you. There's some people popping ready to give their souls to the Lord. And that's what he told his disciples. I thought that was rather deep. Mm-hmm. And it all came from it all came from one conversation. I'm going to stop here. I came from one conversation with a woman, and she went and got all the men, it says, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they Man, all came out, yeah, they all came and, 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 and became believers because of one conversation, and the heart, because God, the Lord knew that the harvest was ripe with them. Amen. I'll, I'll stop there. And, you know, you brought up something else. So, yeah, I think we'll start with two and round it, uh, you know, round it up in a little bit. But and something else just came to my mind, too. I, I'm trying to get it right because I'm not, I wish I was like Perry Stone. Believe me, I love that man, but I don't know everything. Okay, <laughs> but I, I, I do, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but they had, back in those days, the men and the women were separate. Mm-hmm. In fact, whenever they began churches, the women sat on one side and the men sat on the other. The men did not treat the women the same way that they did the men, especially the priests of the temples. And for Jesus to have, first of all, Jesus had women following him. He mm-hmm. had women ministers. The Bible said these women ministered unto him. Mm-hmm. Now he's sitting there talking to a woman of scarlet. Mm-hmm. So uh, can mm-hmm. you imagine what people were saying about him? Listen, if people said that all those, you can only imagine the nasty things they said about him. They called mm-hmm. him, a, what do you call him, a wine bibber and, mm-hmm. and the taxpayer's friend or something, tax collector's friend. If they talked right. about Jesus, they're going to talk about us. So when you find out somebody don't like something about you, let it run off of you like water on a duck's back because yes, he ma'am. broke tradition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, how are they going to call him master and teacher and rabbi, and he's going around talking to women and sitting down breaking bread with women? <laughs> bad women. You know, you know, yeah, bad, bad women, bad to the bone. You know those people didn't, you know the priests and stuff didn't like that. I just wanted to add that in there, bad to the bone, Jesus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amen. And then he, t- he tells us not to be like those priests. He tells us, that they want to wear the best clothes and sit in the highest places. We're not supposed to be like that. People can, if you're more concerned about your your about your Steve Harvey suits and your Stacey Adams shoes, okay, mm-hmm. and if you're more concerned about your haircut and what kind of car you're driving instead of the souls out there that need to hear about Jesus, you're on the wrong track. Yes. Even yeah. though I like Steve Harvey. Sorry, Steve, but, you know, it's my boy. <laughs> But, you know, but, but if that's what Jesus is trying to say. He didn't. He told us to watch out for people like that, the ones who mm-hmm. want to fit in high places and wear the best clothes, you know. Yeah, um, right. So. Mm-hmm. Anybody have any questions? 
everybody's quiet. <laughs> All right. Amen. That's the story of the woman at the well. I'm glad everybody came on tonight. Thank you for hanging in there with us. It's kind of rough for me. I uh, had something happen today that kind of took my mind off of things, and I had to get myself back together, but God is good, you know. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so um, thank you for coming, everybody, and um, if nobody has any questions, um, Aaron, would you like to pray us out, or if you wanted to add something, you can, or if you just want to pray? Yeah, I- I'll pray. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you again for another Bible study, Father. We just thank you, Lord, that you are number one in our lives, and you show yourself <clears throat> big in our lives, Father. Yes, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Reverend Essie. Whatever attack came to her today, Lord God, it will not prosper. Your word says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that <clears throat> even though it could be formed, it will not prosper. And we just thank you, Lord, that she flourishes in your word, Lord God. She flourishes in wisdom. She flourishes in the in the things that you will have her to do in this lifetime, Lord God. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you'll prosper her as a result of her obeying your word, conducting the Bible study anyway. And, Father, we just give you the glory for what you're doing in every life that's on this line, Father. Father, whatever need that you have, that they have, we thank you that it's met. We call it met in Jesus' name. Father, even the junk that we stepped in ourselves, got ourselves into some mess, we just thank you that you're moving on our behalf. And thank you, Lord, that you are our deliverer, Lord God, and you'll get us out of whatever it is, put us on a straight and narrow path, Father, and we won't turn again to the dog's vomit. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for moving in this Bible study bringing out points that that are that 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 would normally be brought out and father we thank you for the word that's going to be that is the part that is imparted into our hearts and in the time of need lord god the spirit will bubble it up to our minds so we'll know what to do in the time of need so father we just give you the glory give you the praise give you the honor so move in in our lives right now lord god let, let this not be the last time we talk about the woman of the well or any of the principles therein. And we just give you glory for what you're going to do for us, Lord God, even on tomorrow. We thank you, Lord, that the things that the, not only the blessings are waiting, but we thank you, Lord, that we escape all of the traps that come. And we just thank you, Lord, for uh, we lift up uh, everybody here that needs healing, everybody here that needs delivering. We lift up my friend Kim. We call migraines a thing of the past. We call her body healed in Jesus' name. We ask you to heal her gallbladder right now, Lord God, and cause her to live a pain-free life for the rest of her days. We lift up my family, Lord God, and every family represented here, Lord God, and ask you to meet their need. And if we come across any family member that needs to accept you as their Lord and Savior, as you said, that the harvest is white, I thank you, Lord, for giving us the words to say in prayer, in counsel, to bring that soul to you, Lord God. And we just give you the glory in advance for it, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you and give you all glory, all praise, and all honor. In the mighty, massive name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. God bless you all. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you back next Wednesday. Amen. Good night. Good night.